so the idea to apply to be an RA actually came from my RA freshman year. I hadn't put a whole lot of thought into it really. Like the job seemed appealing to me, but I hadn't really looked into how to apply, how I would go about applying, things like that. Um, and she actually approached me one day and told me that the process was going to be starting soon and she thought I'd be a good fit for the job. I was actually kind of dragged into this by my roommate because he was applying to be an RA and I was like, no, nah, I don't want to be an RA. And he was like, it's free room and board. And I was like, let's go to an info session. Let's see how this uh, happens. Let's try this. When you come back in the summer, you come back two and a half, two weeks early, and it's an eight to eight day, basically, six days out of the week, depending on how they do the training that year. It was sort of overwhelming. It was, it was a lot, and there's a lot of information to put in over a week and a half, but it was also super fun. Um, what sort of things did we do? Um, we sat in a lot of sessions uh, in Science 101 or Rhodes 203. <laughs> And some days would be super long. We'd be, you know, working in the science center or whatever building we were in up until 6 p.m. And you learn different things. So like one day is like all the hard stuff, like the suicidal ideations, the sexual assault, all that stuff. And then we also have things to kind of wind us down after a long day of training. We'll have like little games that we do within our staffs or we'll go to a camp or some other thing this year, we went to this place called High Five. The goal, I think, with the High Five experience was to help our staff learn how to better work with one another. It kind of goes along with the, the bit I mentioned earlier about you know knowing who you are and then taking that back into the staff. We did high ropes and we did all, like all this like, oh, can you depend on your staff? Like they're going to help you move across these like wood things. You're just like, I'm going to die. Like this is where I die. <laughs> like, and then we have this training called BCDs, which stands for Behind Closed Doors. Behind Closed Doors, we have returning and RAs act as if they're residents in a situation that an RA will come across. It, it allows them to deal with incidents in a controlled environment. So what happens is the new hires will go around one of the buildings and they'll come across um, mock incidents which are carried out by the returning RAs. It's sometimes it's a very difficult event and it's in a difficult activity because we don't just go from your typical alcohol, drug uh, incidents. We go all the way into like sexual assault incidents, suicide ideation incidents. Um, diversity and bias problems, which those are some issues that I think can hit people in very different ways. You don't know what's actually going on behind a closed door. Someone could be passed out if it, you think someone's just drinking in there, but you know, you have to learn on the spot, like, what am I going to do? How am I going to react? And you're doing it with peers that understand what you're going through. As an RA, there's a lot of stuff that we do. Um, we put on programs for the greater halls and then we'll do what are called CDPs for our floor buildings. There's something that I'm also starting right now um, is our individualized interactions, otherwise known as IIs. So that's sort of just a quick conversation we have with each one of our residents uh, twice a semester usually. Uh, other than being an RA, I am Vice President of Sayuslan Fraternity, which is a co-ed fraternity. I am on the track and field team and cross country team. I am involved in student government as well as uh, I work with the community service office. I'm the president of the Social Activities Council, 
which is otherwise known as SAC. I am in Chemistry Lyceum. I am a mentor in Mentors in Violence Prevention. I am also a peer tutor at the Center for Writing on campus. And I am also doing research in the chemistry lab. And then I take classes. When we are on duty, the first thing we do is we call the RD on duty to let them know that we are on and we will tell them who is on with us and they'll usually ask us to be like, can we hear a voice? And they'll just be like, hey, it's me. And then you sit desk and you kind of just are in sight. So if anything happens, they can come talk to you. If I can focus on it, I'll be doing my homework, <laughs> trying my very best to. If I can't focus on things, which happens frequently, I get distracted easily. Um, so I'm, again, sometimes I'm coloring or it's a paint night and I'm watercoloring at the desk. And then you do rounds. So you meet up with your partner at a specific time, you go around the buildings or building and you just see if like things are broken or if people are breaking policy. But at the same time, you know, if you look at it the right way, it's also an opportunity to get out and meet people and you know, have people know who you are as well as know who the people that you're living with are. It's up right here. <laughs> it honestly, it doesn't smell that bad. It smells like coffee. It smells like chocolate. Should I um, we have an unknown substance on process. I don't know what to do. It doesn't smell, it smells like coffee. I feel like we should just call we can like have DTC come in tomorrow, so that way they don't have to come in tonight. It's not like throw up or bodily fluids. I mean, every once in a while, yeah, you know, we could walk by a room at one in the morning and they're being wicked loud and we have to knock and address the situation and like that could turn into a, they open the door and there's alcohol behind them on the floor or on a desk or something, so then we have to deal with that. Are you on duty? This is Natasha. <laughs> oh man, the duty phone is, <laughs> most days is the bane of my existence. Um, not so much in a sense that I hate my job and I hate having to work, like obviously I know what I signed up for. It's a terrifying experience when your body just kind of like, just shuts down for a second as you have a small panic attack of what is on the other side of that phone. It's scary because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what they're calling you for. It could be, hi, my toilet's broken or there's a passed out kid in the front. Like, what do I do? So we got a call on the RA on duty phone saying that there's two people that were in, we have like a showroom for tours in Carl and there were two people in there. And essentially these two people didn't go here but they were guests of someone and they were trying to sleep in that room. But that room was supposed to be locked and it was locked. Somebody unlocked the door for them and told them that they could sleep in there. But like, that's not okay. Addressing situations is always awkward. It's nothing we want to do, but since it is part of the job, we have to be able to do that. I'm in my third year as an RA, and my, my heart's still thumping out of my chest when I knock on a door, because again, I never know what I'm gonna find. Um, I'm not an extremely large person, um, so I, I guess I always sort of get nervous as to what, whether I'm gonna have a resident who is aggressive and they're gonna push me out of a doorway, which has happened, actually, I've been pushed out of a doorway before during an incident or you might have the incident where you are afraid that someone could potentially lose their life with like a transport or a suicide ideation. My first incident that I ever had to deal with was also my first night ever on duty, which was beautiful and magnificent and a problem. But my first night on duty, uh, about halfway through the night, I get a call from Melissa, who was one of the other RAs on my staff at that time. And she was like, oh, well, you have to come over here. We just called an ambulance. We have a transport. Someone needs to go to the hospital. And I remember, like, I laughed it off. And I was like, haha, good one. I was like, how's, the, how's P3 going? And she's like, no, seriously, you need to come over here. And I was like, oh, oh, okay, all right. And it was, like, just her saying that was the most horrifying thing in the world. During one night, I was on duty, and we were on a round, and a door was opened, and we saw 
five beers on one of the desks in the room. So of course we had to address the situation. One of the residents was becoming very agitated and was getting up in my face and threatening to get me fired because he claimed that I broke into his room and that I was violating the rule book, which I was not. We then left the incident um, and we were in the RD's office writing a report when the kid who was being very difficult walked by with three of his guests and someone else. And I heard one of them say as they were passing, oh, Nathan's in there, what a fucking faggot. It hurt that me doing my job made someone think that they had the right to call me a faggot. There was a resident who was a close friend of mine. He didn't, he wasn't actually my resident, but he and I have become very close friends. And he was dealing with issues of depression, suicidal ideation. And it's a tough thing to talk about because you really need to trust who you're talking to about it. You really need to be able to tell them everything. And as an RA, I have to let someone else know. They need to be a part of this because I can't give you everything you need, but I can direct you towards professionals that you that can really help you. And it's tough seeing that kind of hopelessness in your friend's eyes because he wasn't just my resident, he was my friend. He was my friend first and then became my resident. He ended up moving to my floor because there was an open room. And it's, it's a lot to hear about. And it's really tough because those lines you want to blur them, but you really can't because it's really black and white of what your job is and how hands-off you have to be. We don't get to decide punishment as RAs. We don't get to decide we're going to help you with everything. We just kind of point you in the right direction, take down notes, and hope everything's going to be okay. My first year as an RA when I was a sophomore specifically, I remember that because um, I actually ended up going into counseling because I spent so much time thinking about any sort of situation or interaction, interaction I dealt with. Um, and I developed a lot of anxiety over that. And um, so at that time, how I alleviated that was going to counseling and talking to the counselor. The difficulty in what I had to deal with is partially a reason I didn't return as an RA, but not in the way you'd think. It wasn't because I couldn't handle it. It wasn't because it took too much of a toll on me. It was just another thing on the list that was, why this isn't right? It wasn't an issue of, this job's too wearing on me, I can't do this. I just wanted to be able to give the job 100%, and I felt like, even though I was giving it 99%, that's still not 100%, and that's what it needed. I, it needed the time that I couldn't give it. It's like a dog, you gotta be home to walk it, to feed it, to make sure it doesn't poop on the floor. And you'd be surprised at how much poop on the floor you have to deal with as an RA. This job is definitely very difficult to deal with. Um, there are some times where I'm just like, I do not want to do this anymore, but it's an incredible experience. And for the most part, it is very rewarding. And I think that's why applied and especially why I reapplied because there's just so many pros as opposed to the few cons. So despite all the, the stresses and the annoyances that can come with this job, the thing that keeps me coming back most, I would say, is the people. You know, it's the idea that for one whole year I'm going to have this floor of individuals who like are expected to like look up to me. I'm there to guide them. I'm there to help them out. And the people you meet through Res Life and through the other groups on campus you'll work with doing programming, it's just it's phenomenal and I love it all. Single's pretty nice too. Same. <laughs>
that desk. Good for me. Um, have you ever felt your your anus just involuntarily slam shut? It's not fun to us. It's more paperwork for us. You guys get paid. Uh, no, you guys get charged. <laughs> yeah. I have to sit so I don't look fat. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm just gonna let you... Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you want anything else. Tell you my whole life story if you want. <laughs>